right. I will uh, call recording the... in progress. <laughs> I will call the meeting to order at 6:30 p.m. This is a normally scheduled uh, meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, first order of business will be to approve the minutes of June 5th, 2023. I will entertain a motion. I motion we approve the minutes from June 6th. 5th. 5th. All right, and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up is employee and board appointments. Yes. So um, I will go through um, as quickly as I can the um, appointment, and then I think probably the easiest motion for you is um, to all appointments appoint as, as presented. presented. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, actually, we need to do the accountant after we hire them. Uh, Cynthia Bennett, administrative assistant. David Zagorski, assessor's office administrative assistant. Stephen Ball, board of health agent. Um, Thomas Quinlan, Jr., building commissioner. Mark Snow, assistant building commissioner. Ron Lauren, assistant building commissioner. Louis Hasbrook, Alternate Building Commissioner, Heather Davis, Collector Treasurer, Assistant Collector Treasurer, Jeff Kravitz, Town Administrator, Contract Me, um, and Chief Procurement Officer, Jeff Kravitz. Um, okay, and then we go to Highway. The Fire Chief appoints all the, the firefighters. Um, highway Superintendent, George Emery. Highway Laborer, Matt Martin. Highway Laborer, John Skrabisky. Uh, temporary Highway Laborers, Dwayne Jenks, I think it's David Hansen, uh, Fred Laurinaitis, Connor Wakis, Emery Payton, and April Griffin. Oh, sorry, a April Griffin is the Highway Department Secretary. Um, plumbing and Gas Inspector Anthony Logren, uh, Police Chief is Contracted, Police Department Clerk April Griffin, uh, Police Department Full-Time Officers, Benjamin Peters, Peter Scoble, Brenda Tuzlowski, um, Jeff Belanger, and full-time sergeant, Brendan Lyons, part-time officers, Zoe Smith, Vincent Fab Fabi, Dale Brown, Jordan Zukowski, Taylor Boudry, uh, animal control officer and animal inspector, Emmy Martin is both. All officers, including the chief, um, will serve as alcohol enforcement agents, as well as poll workers. Uh, appointment of payroll clerk, Joanne Beagle. Uh, recreation coordinator, Jim Ewan. Wiring inspector, Bill Ehrman. Alternate wiring inspector, Paul Miller. Um, and then we're going to start getting into committees. Uh, Agricultural Commission, Jennifer Uncles, uh, Robert Williams, and Megan Arquin. Burial Agent, Wendy Hool. Capital Improvement Planning Committee, Mike Skibiski, Peter Gagarin, Dana Roscoe, Rock Warner, Lauren Starr, and Lauren Starr. Uh, Civil Defense EMD is Lori Smith. Um, Community Preservation Committee, Megan Arquin, Stuart Beckley, uh, Gabrielle Kurth, Jennifer Uncles, Helen Clark, and Mike Wisseman. Um, three year appointments to the Conservation Commission Jennifer Uncles and Nancy Pick. Three constables Fred Laurinaitis, Al Richards, Mike Wozniakiewicz. Um, Council on Aging LaDonna Lanik and Marianne Kowalik. Cultural Council is Mary Gorman, Barbara Howey, Julie Jacques, Peter Lacey, Debbie Russell, Tammy Thompson, Beth Roberge Friedrichs, Rishali Javeri, and Jessica Feidenkevitz. Economic Development Committee, Jim Bernotis, Alex Katsura, Katsura uh, Fred Laurinaitis. Mm, I'm thinking it's probably not David because I think he was select board. Uh, and Rock Warner Jr. The Emergency Management Director, Lori Smith. Energy Committee, Aaron Falbell, David Goodwin, Laura Williams, and Meg Fisher-Krugman. 
Historical Commission, Helen Clark, Stephen Schneider, Jessica Skibiski, Craig Felton, Marianne Gunderson, Margaret Orellup, Parking Clerk, Heather Davis, um, Personnel Committee, George Emery, Michael Wozniakiewicz, Valerie Voorhees, and Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team, uh, Stephen Ball, Ben Barshevsky, George Emery, Fred Laurinaitis, Jeff Kravitz, uh, Chief Dimitropoulos, and Chief Benjamin. Um, Town Council, KP Law. Uh, I serve as the Network and Electronic Resources Agent, Procurement Officer, ADA Coordinator, PVTA Representative, Ethics Municipal Liaison, Community Economic Development Strategy, uh, Contact, and Super Record um, at public records request person, <laughs> RAO. Uh, Village Center Committee, and this is the last page. Uh, Kyle Snow, Rock Warner, Jessica Skibiski, Lauren Starr, Elizabeth Sillen, uh, and then the Zoning Board of Appeals full members, Jim Bernotis, Jim Williams, Hollis Graves, and associate members, Amanda Hanley and Rock Warner. Can you read the capital plan committee one again? Yes. Um, Mike Skibiski, Peter Gagarin, Dana Roscoe, Rock Warner, Lauren Starr. Who am I missing? And no, I just want to make sure you um, got the. He had resigned. Um, Jerry. Jerry, yeah. I just want to make sure that you had. I didn't hear it, hear it, and I was like, you know, I should double check that before we. Put him on a committee that he had asked yep. to resign from. All right, thank you. Um, I will entertain a motion to accept those as read. I motion. Excuse me. Oops, sorry. Sorry. May I interrupt for a moment? Please. Um, I wasn't, I, I might have missed it. Jeff, did you met, mention Adam Coffin for highway as a reappointment? Because he was appointed, but then that should have been until the end of June, and then he should be on the list for July 1st. You're, you're right. No, I did not. Thank you. Adam Coffin, Thank who is the uh, temporary laborer that was appointed a couple uh, last week, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, reappointing July first. Thank you, Cindy. Okay. Okay. So, I make a motion. We accept, as Jeff has presented to us, the appointments. Seconded. Any discussion? Right. Hearing no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Okay, um, next is um, there is a new alternate plumbing and gas inspector, um, Luke Felton. So since he is not a reappointment, he's a new appointment. So um, if you want to make a motion to appoint Luke Felton as the alternate um, plumbing and gas inspector. Okay, I motion we appoint Luke Feltman as the alternate plumbing and gas inspector. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Thank you. And now um, the select board appointments on committees. Um, I, I will propose something and then you can have a discussion um, and maybe swap and um, decide. I got a, a list uh, from Dan Murphy, who's not here this evening. Um, on what his preferences were. So, briefly, um, Crystal, you are currently on housing, um, just appointed South County EMS and personnel, and we're thinking about maybe adding CPA to your plate, taking some stuff away. Um, Dan would have Village Center, uh, the Franklin Regional Council of Governments uh, Council, the South County Senior Center and the Ditch Committee, and then Nathaniel would do economic development, capital planning, uh, and Union 38 negotiations. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. Okay. And these are the easy ones if you guys decide you want to <laughs> appoint a different one of you. It's you need a yeah. motion on that, or is that? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So I motion we. Appoint the select board members as Jeff just presented. Seconded. Any discussion? No. 
All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Two nothing. Thank you. So you'll take care of notifying those groups who to add to their mailing lists and who to remove, or? Yeah, I won't take credit for it, but Cindy's good. Uh, do you have a question, Cindy? Sorry, your hand's still up. Sorry, I don't. Okay. Um, yeah, she, she's all right. Done. There we go. Thank you. All righty. Wonderful. And that's all the appointments we need to do today. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Next up, we have rural schools bill. Um, and we have Jess here to talk to us about that. Um, currently, we have on the table is it both a letter and a resolution. Is that yes. correct? Um, a letter and a resolution to uh, show our support as a select board for the rural schools bill. Um, for context, this is a bill. Um, written by our members of the state legislature, specifically for towns like ours. Um, I am fully in support of it because it's gonna bring more money into the schools, it's gonna make it more equitable for um, learning across the state, um, and it's gonna help towns like ours that, was it two thirds of our budget goes to schools or something 16 close to that? Percent, yeah. um, it's gonna take some burden off of towns like ours, so I think it's a great idea, um, and thank you to both Joe and Natalie for um, doing work on that. Great. Um, did you have anything you wanted to say about that? I don't. I mean, like I said, you summed it up. It was written for us, you know, for areas like ours. So I'm, I'm in support of, you know, of moving forward. Cool. Um, do we have any public comment? I hope you'll support it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, anyone on the, uh, on the Zoom meeting who'd like to make any public comment? All right, not hearing any public comment, um, I would entertain a motion to both draft a letter and to um, present a resolution to support the uh, bill. Do we want to read that resolution into record, Jeff? Is that a good idea? Sure, yeah. Do you have a copy of that up here? Um, I have a copy online. I probably have it in my thing also. I got it also here. If it'll load. Uh, oh, this looks like the wrong date. Um, Mine's just doing the lovely loading wheel of. <laughs> yeah, those. well, this yours is even doing that. Mine is just total. We're all. We're looking, can we give credit to the Mohawk Trail Regional School District leadership for the, the base of the resolution? They provided it, and then yeah. I, I added a, few, a suggested a few extra paragraphs at the end of that Sunderland. Yes, thank you to them for, for us, if you don't mind. Yes. I think their thanks will be if the bill passes. Yes, <laughs> all of our thanks will be. All right. Um, Jeff, do you want to read that? Our, sure. Our clerk is not here today, unfortunately. All right, a resolution in support of the Rural Schools Bill. Uh, whereas rural school districts in Massachusetts face daunting threats to their financial stability and thus to their ability to provide rural students with the same quality of educational opportunity enjoyed by students in other parts of the state, whereas the Commonwealth has rightly touted its significant increase in education funding following the 2019 Student Opportunity Act, SOA. However, the most needy rural and declining Enrollment districts have received less than 1% of that increase in funding. Whereas no less than four recent state and legislative commissions have reviewed the looming crisis facing rural schools and concluded that rural school districts are seriously under-resourced and underfunded. Whereas the most recent of these commissions was specifically created by the SOA, quote, to study and make recommendations concerning the long-term fiscal health of rural school districts that are facing or may face declining student enrollment, unquote, including recommendations for, among other things, quote, expanding the rural school aid grant program, end quote, and, quote, establishing and including a low and declining student enrollment factor within the foundation budget, end quote. Whereas, in its final report issued in the December 2022, the Commission 
on the fiscal health of rural school districts concluded that the districts with very low in student enrollments cost 16.7% more to operate than the state average and that small K-12 regional school districts cost 22.7% more to operate than larger ones. Whereas the Sunderland Elementary School District and Frontier Regional School District are such limited enrollment rural district districts, whereas Sunderland and Frontier have received virtually no increase in Chapter 70 state aid for years, while the district's fixed costs, which do not decline in tandem with student enrollment, have pushed the district's operating budget up substantially over that period. Whereas Sunderland, with a population of approximately 3,600, has a very limited ability to raise property taxes or other revenues, and yet is left to carry the burden of increasing education costs. Whereas education now accounts for 57% of Sunderland's town budget, excluding health insurance for school department employees. Therefore, be it resolved. Oh man, I don't think I'm going to get to the bottom. I think there's a little bit more, isn't there? Are there two resolves or no? Uh, that the Sunderland Select Board urges the Massachusetts Legislature's Joint Committee on Education to schedule a prompt hearing for H. 3576 and its companion bill S2388 and ultimately to recommend passage by both chambers of the Massachusetts General Court. Is that the end of the resolution? That's what I'm seeing. Okay, okay. excellent. Good. Excellent. Thank you very much for reading that. Um, is there any discussion on that anymore? Okay. Not hearing any discussion, I would entertain a motion to uh, both issue the letter and to accept the resolution as presented. I motion we accept the resolution as presented and sign the letter all right all those in favor aye aye two nothing Thank you. oh and i seconded that too may i get verbal permission from both of you to add your names to our to our public officials sign on letter you have my permission Crystal, is it the on? same letter it's the same letter that you just approved yes great thank you okay excellent thank you very much for that thank you all right, next up on our docket is the public safety parking for state vehicles. Um, just to catch everyone up on this, we have a request from a state employee who got a state vehicle to park set that vehicle at the public safety complex um, when they are not using it overnight. Right. So um, I think the good points that were brought up last time or when I introduced this was why can't they park at home? <laughs> and is this a new policy where we can get inundated with it? So um, only emergency responders are allowed to park their state vehicles at the home. Um, and even they have to apply to be able to do that. So this person is not an emergency responder, which is why they can't park. They're not eligible to park their vehicle at home. It is not a new policy. Um, it's a policy that's been in place. It is a, a new job for the Sunderland resident. Um, so basically, the policy says only state employees who are Sunderland residents can apply. They have to, it's only for um, vehicles with state license plates. Uh, no more than two vehicles. No larger than an SUV. They have to move if they're asked to move um, in an emergency situation, or if the fire department's doing training or something, and the town could revoke the permission at any time. Um, we're also going to maintain basic information, name, cell phone, in case we need to get in touch with them. And, and they're going to sign a, a release of liability so that if anything happens in the, to the so vehicle. So for both right. their personal vehicle and their state vehicle? <laughs> yes. Okay, because I'd assume they're going to be yes. traveling there in a personal vehicle, getting into their state vehicle, and then leaving their personal vehicle there. Now, would, would we get their sign, sign off but also something signed by the, the state? Because like, I love that the employee the, the whole, doesn't hold us liable for that, but I'd, I'd want that to, to have some kind of state. There, there is um, a state, uh, I'll double check with that. Okay, yeah. please do. Um, and it, it makes sense, you know, his alternative is probably what the, the, the DPW one over in Deerfield maybe, something like that. Which would be, you know, for a Sunderland resident, would be kind of a haul to have to. Yeah, I mean, and, and Michaela, it's not a problem, but, you know, I'm, you know, we are going to have a vehicle, a personal vehicle sitting there in that parking lot while they're on their day job. Yeah, so yeah I would want to have 
their sign off on liability for their personal vehicle and some assurance from the state that if their state vehicle was damaged in our parking lot, the state's not coming after us for that because that's that would kind of be a yep, yep, that makes sense. And then I imagine they'll just work out minor particulars with the, the police department, public yep. safety complex, just like you know, winter in the event of plowing, yeah, they have access to keys or something like that, yeah. Okay. Do you need a, um, a motion from us to grant that, or is that just since the policy already exists, we're just letting it? Uh, no, this is this is a new policy. So yeah, if you want to, um, I, I would, based on your comments, um, maybe uh, vote to adopt it contingent on not being you know not being liable for damage to the state. And in yeah. in an agreement with the public safety complex for a way to get the vehicle moved yeah. in a snow emergency or something like that if that person is and, sorry did, did you get sign off on this from the the chiefs yes so they're both fine with it yeah okay that, yeah, that would also they, be something i want to make sure that they weren't yes. both like well thanks didn't ask me about that you know yeah. okay um yeah i would entertain such a motion so moved all right we have a motion made and i will second it all those in favor aye Aye, to nothing. Thank you. All right. Next up is the sick bank review. Um, yep. Sorry, I'm just making sure I get this motion. Um, need elevator music. Could we turn on over? So um, last Monday, the personnel committee met and they were discussing the sick bank policy and. They recommended that the select board amend the sick bank policy so that new employees can take advantage of it. And basically the way it's written now, it's capped at 600 hours. And if you're not in it and it's capped, you can't get in it. So uh, since 2019, no new employees, have, including myself, have been able to take advantage of it. The um, sick bank is for... Like everyone has pulled some in for emergencies for right. Know. So once a year, you can donate. I think between eight and twenty-four hours or something like that um, of your sick time, and then at any point after that, while you're an employee of Sunderland, if you need to, if you've exhausted all your paid time off and you have an illness or an injury that's preventing you from coming to work, you can apply to use the sick bank um, hours, and then that would be. Reviewed by the personnel committee and ultimately decided by the select board whether or not to grant uh, the use of those hours it would reduce the sick bank, um, the total number of hours in the sick bank by however many, and then new people could join. Not many people have been using it. Um, so again, the, it was capped at 600. The recommendation is to allow anybody who's eligible to come in and then at the end of every fiscal year, if it's above 600, just bring it back down to 600. Where would the would the other, those hours just disappear then? So they disappear now. Oh, right. because they're already, okay. So the in reality else? right now, so say, and I'm using fictitious numbers mm -hmm. here, but say Jeff has 10 sick days he doesn't use. Mm -hmm. They're gone. Right? He doesn't use them. They just disappear into thin air. Okay. Because he didn't use them. Correct? Once you've maxed. Yeah. Right. Once yeah. you've maxed out, they're just gone. So there's a cap, but you can still cruise some and roll some over. But So this will be people who've hit that cap and want to use, donate some of these. Or, as you said, new employees who want to get into the system um, right. by so, putting some of their hours Right. In. So even Jeff, as, say, a one-year employee, after his first year, he puts 12 hours into the sick bank. That's now... He's part of the sick bank because mm -hmm. he's put in his 12 hours. Jeff is out ice skating, falls, breaks his leg, can't come to work for 10 weeks, just as an example. He goes through all his vacation time, all his sick time, and he still has like three weeks where he's not going to be getting paid. Yeah. He can contact the select board or he can contact personnel committee. They'll make a recommendation say we want to give them one week we want to give them three weeks they'll make a recommendation then it'll come to the select board and we will 
make that alter. So it's kind of like a little self. Yeah, it makes sense. Just a couple quick questions. Um, currently, do all employees who want to be in it have to donate every year to be in it, or is it once you donate once, you're in it for ever? Once you donate, once so you're in it. So if someone uses a couple weeks and it goes back up to 600, is that the current employees putting more in, or is that that? N- yes. Yeah. So, so the way I think it's probably going to wind up working is this first year there might be three or four employees that say, "Yeah, I want to get in." It's going to go up to you know 650 hours. July 1st, 2024, it goes back to zero if nobody used it. Let's say some people use it, goes down to 550. People who have been here, um, not myself, but who have been here and are maxed out on sick time, they'll donate you know 24 hours and raise it back. You know there are a bunch of long term yeah. people that are going to lose it anyway, so they will bring it back up. And that's probably how it's going to work for the next couple of years. But I will mention that the personnel committee is also looking at sort of overhauling this and maybe paid, getting rid of it for paid family medical leave or potentially adding currently it's only for an employee's illness or injury, not a family member's. Um, so the personnel committee is, is asking the town to look at the various options. Right, because um, right now we're kind of under, it, it, right now it appears that sick leave bank is only for the employee's illness or injury. Yeah. It's not for if they need to care for a family member or something like that, where if we at least explore the option of paid family medical leave, mm-hmm. you know, get some costs, get some, you know, figure it out, you know, get some information about it. That now kind of changes things because if you have a spouse that's ill, a child that's ill, you can use that paid family medical leave. Yeah. Versus the sick bank, you wouldn't be eligible for any paid time. And that's also that. administered by the state, and it's a much larger pool, so that if we have a year where 10 people all have a huge medical thing, the sick bank could run out and some of them are stuck, versus if we're in a state-run program, they're all covered regardless because and we it, pay into it. And it takes, and not that I'm trying to shrug any responsibility at all or any, but it takes it off of us mm-hmm. because I may think, oh, this, you know, this person needs the time because this is an illness, but you could have a totally different opinion of it and go, that's, that's not an illness that I would consider covered. Yep. And, and we could be at, at heads over it. And then if you go to the paid, that's administered by somebody else. Well, we're out of that decision making whether this is legitimate or not. And if we were to deny somebody's claim, then they come after us. If the state denies their claim, well, we had nothing to do with that. That's not our regulations. You know, go talk to, you know, yeah, I, Beacon Hill. I, yeah. And that that's where, you know, we're making a determination as... The personnel committee is making determinations, and I'm not saying they're not capable, but th- that's a big thing in reality. If somebody asks for something and determine no, we're not medical professionals. We're not. Yeah, there are people whose careers are to decide these very things, and right, let's and, let them do that. Yeah, and it, it well, and maybe we can't. Maybe we won't be able to afford to do it, but maybe we can. We've got to at least get that so for explored. For, is the plan then to for now just to open it up for new employees for this year to sort of level the playing field right now and then direct the, the, the committee to explore other options and bring those to the select boards yeah. so that down the line we can make those changes? Okay. So I would entertain a motion to open up the sick bank to new employees with the understanding that the, the, the balance goes back down to 600 if it's above that. At the start of each fiscal yeah. year. I think you should direct me to a, bring you a draft of the amended policy to vote on. I like that. <laughs> I, w- I will direct you to bring us a policy, please, with the, with the amendments yeah. in there so that we can review that. Yep. Yeah, I make a motion, Jeff. Amends the policy, brings it to us to review and vote on at the next meeting, if that's not too soon. Yeah, two weeks. Okay. I'm seconded. So, all those in favor? Aye. Two nothing. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for aiming this in the right direction there. Sure. All right. Um, so that's all new business. Um,
old business, we have select board updates. Um, I don't have a whole lot. I just want to uh, shout out to um, both Natalie and Joe and also um, Jim McGovern for showing up to the Franklin County Pride in Greenfield this past weekend. Um, I always appreciate seeing our local legislators out there to um, support that. It's an important event, um, so thank you to them. Um, and that's it for me. Do you have anything, Crystal? No, Jeff. <coughs> Jeff went over the, all the personnel committee things. <laughs> um, I, th I mean, we probably should um, recognize the fact that um, a town employee lost his spouse. There's going to be services um, Thursday? I think so. I think it was Thursday evening um, for Lori Skrbisky, um, wife of John Skrbisky, lifetime Sunderland resident and town employee. So, you know, that was just a terrible thing to have to go through to lose a spouse so young. Thank you, Bills. Yeah, um, the only update is we got the RFP for accounting services out. Um, it is due, we're going to be looking at it. Um, everything's due by Monday, not next Monday, two Mondays at 2 p.m. So that's the next select board meeting. So hopefully I'll at least give, be able to give you an idea of like, hey, we're close to hiring an accountant or something. <laughs> Something's not right. right. But um, yeah, so that, that's all I got. Wonderful. All right. Um, in that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Two nothing. Take us out at 7.01 p.m.